Welcome to Mayhew's gesture presentation. I'm sure many of you looking around the room going, do we really need another chair? Steelcase sells lots of different types of chairs. Many of our competitors have lots of chairs as well. So why another chair? Well, the simple answer is, first, yes, we need another chair. But why? Many reasons why. The first reason would be the range of users in the workforce today. The range is getting wider. We are seeing smaller uh, users in the workforce, but we're also seeing larger users in the workforce as well. As you know, we unfortunately have an obesity problem worldwide. The second reason would be sociology, the sociology of the worker, the generations in the workforce. Everybody sits differently. Everybody wants choice. Choice is becoming more important. I would sit a very different way and would want to sit a very different way than maybe the younger generation that's coming in the workforce today. The second thing, and probably the biggest thing that's driving change in the workplace today and having a great impact on how people sit is technology. All different types of technology, whether it's the mobile device like an iPhone or a Blackberry, whether it's an iPad, whether it's a, a laptop, or even still the big screens. The technology is impacting the way we work, which is forcing us to assume a variety of different postures. So in a nutshell, the worker is changing and work is changing. It's forcing us to assume a variety of different postures, and those postures need to be supported in a safe way, in a healthy way, and in a productive way. Hence the reason, yes, we need a new chair. So how do we go about this? Well, Steelcase went out, and they began to complete a global posture study. They studied over 2,000 people across 11 countries around the world, and the study's still ongoing. But what they identified was 30 more than 30 postures that people were assuming new postures that we haven't seen before. They keyed it down to nine postures, and they range in variety and they're very different. Right from a posture that's called the draw, I wonder if any of you have seen this before. I know that I have. Sitting back, maybe I'm on my phone, maybe I'm on a tablet, and I'm back and I'm taking a, almost taking a break, I'm relaxed. To the multi-device, maybe you're on your phone, Maybe you're on your computer at the same time. Or the swipe. If this is an, an iPad, I could be sitting there, looking at my iPad, swiping through pictures. So the, as I said, the study's ongoing. It's a live study. If you go to steelcase.com and go to the gesture link, the, glo the global study, you will actually see the stats um, update um, as you're there. If you go a couple times a day, it's quite interesting. So now, let me introduce you to gesture. I think you'll notice right off the top, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Absolutely beautiful. The fit and finish is class leading. It's distinctive, yet simple. We wanted to ensure that we created a chair that was understated and blended into the work environment and didn't scream, look at me. You've probably never seen a back that looks like that before very functional. Now, what about the setup of the chair? I've spent lots of time setting people up in chairs. We've always talked about the seat height, backrest height. But with this chair, it's very different. I'm going to focus in on three areas. The first will be the core interface and how our core interacts with the chair. Then I'll talk about limb interface, which is how your upper extremities interact with the chair. And finally, we'll talk about seat interface how your bum and what you sit on interacts with the chair. So let's start with the core. We know that we have to support a wide range of motions through the core as the core moves significantly during many, many postures. We also need to support it to ensure that we're reducing the effects of fatigue. So let me show you the range of motion simply by sitting in the chair. If you focus down in the back, you'll see that chair move to conform to the shape of my spine. So when I recline back, you will see that chair and the backrest of that chair move as my spine moves. It's mimicking, mimicking spine move, movement. As I go forward and then as I go back, my low back is always in contact with the chair. The other thing that we know from the spine is, and from the core is as you move further away, you become more flexible. We wanted to make sure that the chair also became more flexible at the perimeter. 
this again will help support a wide variety of postures. So as I reach in this direction, you'll see the chair move to still support this posture, or if I reach to the right, you'll see the same thing, fully supported through a wide range of motions. That's core interface. Limb interface. What we wanted to do was to support, a wide, again, a wide range of postures and also mimic the motion of the upper extremities. So these arm rests move a lot. And I'll show you that. Okay, so as I do circles with the arm rests, I don't think you've ever seen that before in a chair. Very, very different. Allowing me to, to support my upper extremities in a wide variety of different postures. If I'm working on an iPhone, or a Blackberry, I can be fully supported, as you can see. If I was to switch to a tablet device, the same thing. We've also thought about other technologies that are out there. What about laptops and keyboards? As I approach a laptop and recline, you can see that the armrest stays relatively still. It doesn't tilt up as I recline back. So again, I'm fully supported. We've thought about that. To support a wide variety of individuals, we've also set the armrest back in the chair. Not only does it create a great design, but it also helps support those larger individuals so they don't feel constricted if they're a little wider here. We can also support a wide variety of postures, because now I can simply turn in my chair and I can sit this way. It's very, very comfortable, I'm not restricted. That's the limb interface. Now, what about the seat interface? The seat interface is all about comfort. This is the widest seat pan that Steelcase has ever produced. It may not look like it, but it is. So it's very comfortable for the wide user. But what about the small user? The seat is actually made with a series of cores or holes in the seat pan. If we were to take the cover off, you'll see that. What that does is when the small individual sits, down, sits in that chair, it, it cradles them, keeps them very, very comfortable two other parts of the chair that are very different. A lot of chairs that are out there have a hard exterior frame. There's no hard exterior frame. What we've done is we have comfort right to the edge of the chair. We have a vinyl on the outside for support, but it's very, very comfortable. The last adjustment, and probably the most adjust important adjustment on a chair, is seat depth. What we've seen in the past is the seat depth adjustment has been a paddle on the side, and you have to lift up the paddle and get out of the chair to adjust it. Well now what we've been able to do is to incorporate that adjustment right in the chair so you can see that as I adjust it, you'll see that, see that seat pan moving backwards and forwards, allowing me to adjust that chair to my need quite quickly and very, very easy. This is gesture. I think you'll agree. We needed a new chair. <laughs>